Loading, tying down, and transporting heavy equipment is something that public sector employees do on a routine basis. But those are exercises where the employees have to exercise their professional discipline to make sure they do it by the numbers every single time because the potential for an accident, a serious calamity, is always there. The equipment can roll off the trailer as you mount or dismount, and if it's not tied down properly, the machine could come off the trailer causing serious damage to not only the equipment, but could result in a serious accident or fatality to the motoring public. So it must be done properly every time. Now, in a video of this length, we can't cover all the aspects, but to hit a few of the important details, make sure that your haul truck and your trailer are of the right size and capacity to haul the equipment that you'll be moving. Make sure that you've inspected them thoroughly with special emphasis on tire pressure, brakes, and lights. Make sure you've inspected your tie-down points. Make sure you have the correct number of tie-down chains and that they are of the right capacity and the right number for the tie-down procedure. Also, make sure that your tie-down chain tensioners, commonly called boomers, are also of the right capacity. Make sure you've inspected the deck on the trailer to make sure there are no holes, rotten boards. Make sure it's free and clear of mud or ice that might cause the machine to shift or slip sideways on the deck. If you can, always try to use a spotter when you load the machine up or unload it to make sure you're on track and on the center line of the trailer. Make sure the machine is positioned at the correct point on the trailer so you have adequate rate transfer to the front of the, of the trailer up onto the haul vehicle. If you do not, it will affect the steering of the truck and can cause the trailer to fishtail. Make sure you've checked the overhead clearance on the machine to make sure you don't hit any bridges. That's one that's often overlooked and does result in some serious accidents. And finally, make sure you pick a good safe place to load and unload the equipment. You want it to be away from traffic and you want it to be on level, solid ground that will support the weight of the trailer and the machine when you crawl up on it. A number of accidents have occurred because they tried to load equipment up on ground that appeared to be solid, but after a rain, it was softened up just enough that the increased weight of the equipment caused the trailer to sink and cause an overturn, or ground that had been frozen had thawed sufficiently to allow it to sink once the weight of the equipment crawled up on the trailer. In this video, we're going to focus on the chaining and tie-down procedure, and we'll go through the steps in order. want to use three points of contact when you're climbing in or off the machine. Remove the key and put the key in your pocket for safe store. Basically what you want to do is make sure that the uh, your chains and your hooks obviously are, uh, are tight before you start doing this but um, make sure you're it's pulling down the downward force on all of your hooks um, on both sides and also on the uh, on the binder you want to keep all your slack to one side to keep everything tight and in organized tight manner. Do with your slack, just your access. Just wrap it around. Move your binder down here to this position so it does not back off. Same with your uh, your extra on your boom. Make sure you always put one on it. Also on it. Make sure your uh, your hooks are facing the correct direction. Down down the pool. Now 
All right, so the most important thing is safety wise is make sure that uh, the chain is all the way into the hook. You have the right hook size, correct size for the chain. Uh, these we're using here are 3 8 chains. So you wanna make sure that you're, uh, these are 3 8 on the end. Just when you tighten everything up, Usually if you tighten it to where you can start seeing the tire squat, you're sufficient. And then your uh, slack here on your chain, just take it, wrap your excess around. Okay, the most important thing you want to keep in mind when you're tying equipment down in the safest manner is always make sure that your chains and binders are sufficient. Um, you can tell the, the uh, grade of the chain and the grade of the hooks. If you'll look on them about every fourth link, it'll have a number step. Uh, these right here are grade 70. It's a 3 8 chain, so <clears throat> you want to make sure that the binder you're using is also sufficient with it. They say 3 8 um, on, the, on the hook itself. Um, they also will tell you 3 8 or half inch on the binder handle. Uh, make sure the binders are in good condition uh, no bends no kinks in the uh, in the links and also uh, make sure your threads are not mangled in any shape form or fashion because it makes it a little tougher to, to get everything tightened down if you're not familiar with load and tie down uh, this little emblem right here on the back of the machine shows you a load and tie down point and shows you a fixed situation here which is this uh, that's what you're going to want to tie down to uh, Ninety percent of the equipment you'll be working with, uh, county or statewide, is is going to be labeled on anything like that. Okay. Also, like we stated on the back of the machine, you're going to have tie down points here on the front. Uh, keep in mind, down pull on your hooks, all the way around. Make sure that they're uh, the chain is all the way in the hook. Uh, make sure you got good secure tie down points. Then, like I said before, you're going to want to tighten this down. And take your axis, just throw it over the chain. Also, uh, when you're transporting hauling equipment, uh, state and federal laws require you to have any type of attachment or buckets. At least one chain run across them. That's uh, earlier in the video, you seen us run a chain across the boom on the back. Um, like I said, it is required by state and federal laws. So just make sure you uh, run one chain across it. Obviously the same way you did the rest of the chains. Down force on your hooks. Take your access chain, wrap it around. And you can also uh, just make sure that's fastened and secured in place. Just want to make sure that the uh, the grade of the chain and the uh, working load limit, which is uh, the uh, WLL, is what the uh, what you'll see on your chains or on your paperwork. Um, you just want to make sure that it's it's equal or greater to the uh, the boomer itself on the chain, um, but you don't want the uh, you don't want the chain to exceed the boomer's limit capacity. Um, so say you have a grade 70 chain that's uh, 6,600 pound. Uh, working load limit chain uh, and you have a, a boomer that's you know a, a grade 80 obviously it's going to be greater um, and that's sufficient but you don't want a, a grade 80 chain with a grade 70 boomer. Now this is too large a topic to cover in a video of this length but if you would like more information or training the University of Texas at Arlington LTAP program would be more than happy to help you. Please feel free to call us at the information provided below on the screen.